introducing everybody. Uh, um, Clovis Cowan is a teacher in New York City School District, and he's been uh, acting as a spokesperson for uh, the New York City Education Association. Sandra Thompson, as you know, is with the NAACP, and uh, her organization has its own uh, perspective on the issues as well. And Re Reverend Aaron Wolford has been speaking on behalf of a group that uh, uh, is called the York Concerned Clergy. And uh, so each of our organizations is separate. Uh, uh, the York, York City Education Association, obviously, is, is our local CA. Uh, so uh, um, just you know, to, so that full in, in the interest of full disclosure, tell you who we are and what we're about. But we have real concerns about a uh, move to convert all of the public schools to charter schools. It kind of calls into question what what truly represents a public school. Uh, there are questions we think about. Um, Access as well as uh, the, uh, the citizens' uh, ability to control the outcome of their children's education and have uh, uh, a uh, re uh, means of redress if they have a problem with their children's education. Uh, but also the question of whether private profits are outweigh uh, the public interest in. Can somebody just, maybe we can start here, why are we even at this position now when more than a year ago we thought that this was settled and we were moving forward on uh, a transformation plan? The internal plan right. of the school district. That asked a huge question. And I think that, you know, even some of the school board directors I've spoken to all seem to be confused. Um, it seems as though, um, you know, at least speaking to them, uh, they feel ramrolled, uh, ramrodded, you know, in reference this is school to board you're talking about. some school board directors um, feel as though um, they're getting either little information or meetings are scheduled with short notice and then <coughs> they're overwhelmed with information and they have jobs and families and they're given thousands of pages of documents that they're supposed to review in two days. So, um, listening to a lot of these charter proposals, these charter proposals are saying that it takes a minimum of four to six years to show success. Just taking what they say is true. So it's been less than, what, a year or two that we really allow the internal plan of the city school district to work. So if you know it takes these groups who are starting from scratch a number of years um, to even potentially show success, then you should at least likewise give an equal amount of time to the school district itself. I can understand that, right. but I think David Meckley also said... Uh, sure, I was, I was on the board when mm -hmm. Mr. Meckley came. Yes. Um, and from the outset, um, I did not agree with his coming, number one. I think the timing was bad because um, we had began to turn the district around. Okay, um, and when he came in, he basically said to the school board that when he presents his plan, if they do not uh, accept his plan, then they have no so <coughs> or alternative to what he's going to do. He threatened to um, turn the district into a charter school. He said the same thing to, to the teachers, um, that if they did not accept his proposal, his, his contract proposal, the cuts that he desired to make, mm -hmm. that um, they wouldn't have no recourse, okay? That he basically was sent by the governor uh, and, and the Board of Education uh, to do this. And we know that the, the, the group that's behind the whole idea was your counts. The charter school plan. The charter school plan. Yeah. And, and it's a group that, number one, has no children in the school district, do not send their children to the school district. It's about money. It's about moving one money from one place to another. And um, it's about 
really control of, 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 of taking um, education. Yeah, the, yeah, control of yeah, education. Control of education, control of, of the livelihood of our community. Because the, the middle class and the low class will not benefit from this um, takeover. We're, we're talking about a for-profit um, charter school coming in when we're already in a deficit, you know, of 50 plus million dollars a year. Um, but that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's all about money, it's about economics, but it's not about the economics of the middle class and the, and the lower class. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Coach. Um, you know, you said how did we get to this point. Uh, for, there are a couple of reasons um, that I can speak to as well. I have a copy of uh, the financial recovery plan in front of me right now. I have a few items, items highlighted that, that I'll review with you. Um, it is a public document. You can go to the district district's website. Um, it's prepared by the Chief Recovery Officer, David Beckley. May 15, 2013, you can read through it. Um, and there are various aspects of the recovery plan that has to be followed in order for um, the internal transformation model to work according to him. Um, there were some uh, achievement goals that needed to be met um, that for all intents and purposes would be, I, I don't wanna say they're impossible because nothing's impossible but it, it was almost seemed as if they were written in here um, because it would be another measure to use to go along with the charterization of the school district. The school district would have to, have to stop losing students um, to charters. Um, he had some percentages in here about how the district was uh, projected to lose students through attrition to uh, start charter schools. And another aspect of it was the financial aspect of the recovery plan. Um, the school district and the edu um, ESPs had to, the teachers and the ESPs had to agree to some concessions in order for the district to remain financially solvent. Um, but a, a few things have changed since he had drafted this financial recovery plan. He said it's a working document, it's a work in progress because some aspects may change, some kids may go faster, some kids may come back. You just never know. Um, the, the, one of the reasons why he can't come to an agreement with the teachers, um, and like I said, it's a public document, you can take a look at it any time, is that he's offered the teachers uh, all but 10% cuts, uh, about 10% every year for the next four years. And then, um, Ten percent the first year, nine point eight percent the second year, eleven point nine percent the third year, and ten percent the fourth year. They also have to extend the school day. They'll work a half hour longer per day um, and work five extra days with no additional compensation, and have to pay. Uh, I want to say fifty percent more in insurance cost. It's, it's um, definitely so drastic. It's, but I mean, this is this is the this, same plan that was. Uh, it, it hasn't changed. It hasn't system. changed okay. at all. Um, now, the thing was, these these items say up to these amounts. Uh -huh. This is what he's offering, it, the maximum. Okay. So there is no up to. It is what he's offering. So there is no negotiating. Yeah. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why there has been no agreement. I mean, like I said, this is public a public document, so I don't want to say that we're negotiating in, in, in the press because we don't want to do that, but because this is public knowledge, you can read this yourself. Um, it's made it very, very difficult. This is not a livable wage for me, and I am a teacher. Taking those cuts, my, my wife works part-time. Uh, we have three children that are still school age in the New York City School District. It would be very, very difficult for us. We would not be able to I mean, she'd have to go to work full time. I'd probably have to try to get a second job for us to be able to sustain our, 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 our lifestyle. Um, furthermore, um, in this recovery plan, we had to stop losing students. Well, New Hope is now closed. Those 700 students are now within the boundaries of the York City School District. You're not losing that part of 
the re the reimbursement reimbursement portion that portion of your budget that you were losing to uh, that you didn't get back from the state anymore that had to be now just paid out to New Hope Academy Charter School. That money's not leaving your budget anymore. Well, wasn't that part of the the plan is to bring these bring it? So they got a lot more we, than they we tended to bring. You got a lot more than it. It filled a budget hole. Mm -hmm. One of the first things that we heard as a staff is we're not going to talk about money. When we came back to, to the district, the first day of school, when we were addressed, we're not going to talk about money. We're going to talk about achievement goals. That's fine. But at the same time, like, why is this not being addressed? Why is it only being put out by the media that the teachers won't agree to a new collective bargaining agreement when there are some changes in the, changes in the financial recovery plan that are in here now? But he won't address it. Do you know how much money closes that that brought back? I don't know. I can't give you a figure on that. I think one thing we, we should emphasize is that our different organizations don't have a, uh, a common uh, agreement on the question of charter schools as an institution. It's the question of a 100% conversion to charter schools uh, that we, we are opposed to. TSEA represents some charter schools. Represented teachers in cyber charter schools. Uh, what the what the available research shows, both in Pennsylvania and across the nation, is that there, in, in, if you look at, at academic achievement of charter schools, that they, they roughly uh, mirror uh, the the, the uh, resident school district that they're in, but sometimes not 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 entirely. Some do better. Some do a lot worse. But also, uh, in, in the process, uh, there's a lot of money being taken out of the community uh, in, the, in the form of management fees uh, uh, to charter operators who typically set up uh, arrangements with, frankly, themselves. Uh, uh, they set up uh, um, management companies that they, they, they pro provide um, uh, money to. Uh, and if you look at the two who are described as the two top competing uh, providers for York City, uh, according to my figures, the Mosaica's budget includes a monthly MEI fee, I guess that means a management fee, of $548,000 a month. Uh, so that's $6.5 million in the first year. Charter Schools USA's management fee starts at $3.9 million escalates to over four million a year. Uh, so before they've educated a single student, there's millions of dollars basically flowing out of the community and into these for-profit operators uh, who have, frankly, they've had mixed success in other places, uh, in places like Indianapolis and in Florida and in Michigan. Uh, they've had um, some, some problems. Uh, so uh, if we look at what are being presented as the two options, one is that the teachers agree to kind of give back a third to a half of their compensation, uh, or that all of the schools be converted to for-profit operators. Um, to me, that's, that seems to represent kind of inside-the-box thinking that there are only these two choices and they're both bad. Uh, th there has to be some outside the box option that York City and other school districts that are in a similar situation can consider. Do you have any ideas? Well, yes. Well, yeah. we, can we can have the governor restore state funding to education. I can tell you this. Um, I've watched friends and colleagues get furloughed and lose their jobs. I've watched class sizes balloon. <coughs> you know, my son at Devers Elementary, when, I mean, when he was in third and fourth grade, he's telling me about, you know, there's 30 kids in a classroom, you know? And, you know, you have parents who now say, well, I don't want to send my kids to that school district. I don't want to send my kids there. I'm sending my kids to the XYZ charter school because they can't provide it. And they can't, and, and by default, because of what we've been given, handed to, handed, I mean, this is what you have. You have six sports offered to your high school per year two per season, one for the boys and one for the girls. 
um, <coughs> you have 